My name is Aisha. I run a small business here in Atlanta. Um, have a couple of developers and a couple of designers, and we just do small <coughs> business websites and maintain their websites as well. I also love all things web. I um, anytime. There's a meetup in Atlanta. I try to make my way to it. So one of the meetups that are recently in Atlanta is the Atlanta SAS meetup, led by Jason Reese, and he is awesome. He knows a lot of SAS. So if you guys are residing here in Atlanta, please come and check it out. I'll put a link up at the end of the slide and tweet it out as well. If you want to learn more about SAS, he's definitely the guy to go to. Um, a little bit about me, I have a computer science degree, um, so I'm coming from a programming background, not so much front end, but back end. Um, my favorite language is PHP. I do a lot of web development or web applications using that language. Uh, when I first started the WordPress development, it was back in 2009, I fell in love with it because it has PHP and I already knew it and it was nice. I understood the flow of it, so I just started using WordPress for about 90% of my client sites. We use WordPress for it. Okay, I also am a jazz lover. I love to listen to jazz while writing my code and I'm a foodie. Love to check out all the restaurants here in Atlanta. Any ATLians here? Cool, nice, nice. I'm also a family gal. I love to be with family, and it's kind of hard trying to balance that work-life family. So I just try to make it work. One of the things that um, I do is make sure that I dedicate um, the weekends to my family and try to work strictly Monday through Friday. Sometimes that's hard. <laughs> I know, Sunday. <laughs> I owe them. I owe them. <laughs> All right, so let's see here. All right, Sassy CSS and WordPress, that's what we're going to talk about today. And the first thing I guess we're going to talk about is what is SAS or what, how do we use SAS? And SAS stands for Syntactically Awesome Style Sheets. And it's basically the way I understand it to be, it's a CSS extension that lives on top of your regular CSS that you write. So it's like a preprocessor that gets compiled into your CSS. And the reason for that is because it saves us a lot of time. So for example, you got your CSS file or your SCSS file and then you got the compiler which is a SAS compiler and it generates a CSS file. So why do we need to add this extra step to our particular workflow? Well, for me, it saves a lot of time, a lot of time. And um, one of the things that um, if you're coming from a back-end programming experience, you can easily grasp some of the syntax and some of the things that are the features that lives inside of SAS. But if you're coming from just the front-end development, it takes a little bit of time to get used to. And you can start off small, like even just one of the particular features that are within SAS can, saves you a tr can save a tremendous amount of time, and we'll get into that later. Okay. The way that you install SAS um, for you really hardcore programming heads, you can use the command line, but I'm not a fan of the command line. I love to see an application in front of me to see what I'm actually doing and something that's going to actually let me get to me doing the creative part of the workflow faster. So I use GUIs. For the Mac lovers, we got Code Kit. It's very awesome. You can just drag your particular theme that you want to start working on into Code Kit, and it does all the work for you. You can do a couple of check boxes here and there on the particular um, features that you want, like the output of your CSS, and it does everything for you. The main thing that I like using a GUI for it is the auto refresh of the browser. You know how when you update something and you got to click refresh? You don't have to do that with the, um, well, with CodeKit and with PrePros, you don't have to do that. There are a lot of other GUIs out there, and I'm not sure if the command line does that. I don't work with it. It does? Cool. Okay, got it. So, but that's one of the, that sold me right there, the fact that I don't have to, um, press the refresh button when I'm doing my coding. It just refreshes right there. I update something and I see it a second later. 
Um, and for the windows, Pre-Pros is very good. I've used it once or twice and I like it. I, but I have a Mac and I purchased the um, Code Kit. I like it better. But if you're not a fan of the command line, I recommend Pre-Pros. Pre um, the SAS compiler. There are two different types of SAS compilers and LibSAS is one of the newer ones. Um, the difference between the two, the LibSAS is written in C++ and the Ruby is written in Ruby. And, um, the, but the main difference is the LibSAS is said to be much faster. I'm still on Ruby SAS and it, it's kind of fast to me. I work on small websites so I don't really see a big difference right now. But if you're working on larger websites, you might want to um, install LibSAS. And again, with the code kit or the um, GUI, it recommends which one you want or it asks you which one you want. You can do LibSAS or you can just check the box that says Ruby and it would do everything for you in the back end. Um, the syntax. There's two different types of flavors or syntax of SAS. If you write CSS code, you may want to do the SCSS. Um, that stands for Sassy CSS. That's strictly writing in CSS, so you don't have to change your workflow that much. You just, you write it in CSS. You, it's a couple of features that you may have to learn, but you're going to love those features once you, once you learn them. Um, SAS it's more of an indented syntax. It, it reduces um, the amount of space as also the brackets are gone. So I'm not really familiar with that style of coding. I stick with what I know and what gets the job done faster for me. So you may can start off here and if you think that you, I'm not sure of the advantages of using the other or the indented syntax language, but I guess if it's not using a lot of brackets and space, it may be faster, I don't know. But in the end, you're gonna um, output a compressed style sheet, so I'm not really sure the advantages of that. So I just stick to what I know. Um, speaking of output styles, with the GUIs that I mentioned earlier and also with the command line, you can choose your output style. Um, the nested is the default, that's just your regular flow of writing CSS and that that definitely gets you to read it and understand it better. But if you're pr putting this on the production, you want to do maybe not the expanded. That's the, um, the expanded is a little bit compact, but then you have the compressed version. That version just puts everything on one line, which is what you want. So you have one CSS file going up to the server, and that server is reading it in that one line, and that's much faster than the other three mentioned. Okay, so now that you know a little bit about SAS or how to install SAS, let's say you just downloaded a fresh copy of WordPress and you want to start developing your theme. A starter theme that I like to use is underscores. Very nice. They're, they're made by WordPress Automatic Team, so they have a lot of the features that are needed within the WordPress core. So that's good enough for me. That can be my starter theme because I'm using WordPress. Why not use underscores.me as your starter theme? With the um, starter theme, you can generate if you want it to have a SAS file or not. And then you write your other features that um, your name. And the I think the second line is how your database tables are going to look. So they kind of customize your database tables instead of the WP slash whatever. It's going to be whatever you put right there. So that's a really great feature. Um, you put your author and the author URL and a description, and then you click Generate, and it's going to generate your starter theme for you. Within the starter theme, the first thing you want to make sure that you have is the in the style.css file, you want to have an exclamation mark in the comment section. So with SAS, SAS strips out the comments that are um, the two slashes. Slash, the two slashes, SAS strip those out. But the um, comment section right here, if you add an exclamation mark, you are telling SAS to keep that there because that's needed for WordPress. So make sure that you do that so you won't run into any problems. 
So the folder structure of SAS, once you download the underscores.me, they give you a SAS file. Within that SAS file, you have a lot of folder structures, which is nice. It's not a lot of code already written. It's basically structuring the layout that you have so far. And it's not even a nice layout. When you actually activate this thing, it looks horrible. But it's meant to look that way because they want you to get creative with it. And I prefer it to look that way because nothing is there. So that means I can start from scratch. So they just give you a lot of um, already mentions that you think you would use, some modules. And inside of these folders, you see how it has the underscore dot normalize dot SCSS? Those are called partials. And I think the next slide shows you an in-depth look of that. But the, within all of these folders are partials. You still have your one output file, which is going to be the style.css, but this is the SAS of that style. So you're still always going to have one file that you're putting up on the production site, which is always good. So within these folder structures, you can kind of go in there and say you want to edit something on your forms. You want to make your forms look really nicer. So you go into the forms and it has a particular style setting already there, a bare bones style setting. So you go in there and you add your particular styles. These are already imported in the size file. So for example, this is a partial that, that's within the mixing. So right here we have our um, theme, and we importing variables dash site. So you can see that I'm pointing at the wrong one, or I don't think it's showing the. I'm scared to even move this because it may mess up. But the mixins folder. So you're inside of the mixins folder right here, and you have a mixins file where it's displaying some um, content right here. And this is that. So how, it, how you import that, you're importing that right there. It's going to say mixing dash master. You don't have to put the underscore or the um, extension to it. You just have to put the name of the file, and SAS will know to pick that particular one up. And what that does, even though it says, I know in CSS, when you're importing something right now, that's calling another HTTP request. But within SAS, it doesn't do that. So you're, it's, not, it's not requesting that. It's going to actually bring that in in the compiler and put that all in inside of the main file. So it's not really calling. It's still only calling one HTTP request. Uh, that actually is my cue to ask you if you have any questions thus far. <laughs> and drink some water. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and I'm, I know if I'm going too fast, please ask questions. Go ahead. So when you, I saw that um, you compile your, um, C, your CSS or you know, your theme code to, to upload. Now, if you need to make adjustments to it and you, you're downloading it into a text editor, can you expand it again? Or is that? You're talking about expanding the partials or the CS, the SCSS file. Right. Now, I'm, I'm saying you're sure that you probably have an original code, but if you're working on someone else's who doesn't and you need to work on that style sheet, can you, is there okay. a option to expand it back out again? Okay, got you. So that with that, you want to inform whoever is working on it, hey, we're using SAS right here. You want to let them know that because if they edit that style.css in, in their own way and upload it to the server, and then the next day you come back and use your SAS to um, output a new CSS file, they're going to lose their changes. So you need to communicate that with them. If they're not familiar with it, you can kind of create a custom SAS file that's going to generate and tell them to write that in a customs page, and you kind of have to take that and paste it within there. There are also plugins in WordPress that has, um, you can, I haven't used any, but there are plugins where it can convert, it does all the compiling on the actual server, so you don't have to work on it locally. So, but that person still has to know SAS and only work in the SAS file for that to happen. <coughs> Any more questions? No. 
Okay, let's get down into some things that you're going to learn when you're using size. The main thing that I learned first, and I just used that on one website, I didn't learn any other features, was variables. And that's the best thing that I think is a part of the um, size. It's the fact that you can create <coughs> variables, meaning you can create color codes within a variable. And so, for example, your CSS file right now is probably 20,000 lines. Within those 20,000 lines, you got a branding color and you have to always reference that branding color. So it's probably in more than one line. All you have to do with size is create a variable for that branding color. So you got your secondary, your primary, your secondary, and your tertiary colors. And all you have to do is create that um, variable and put the color name in there. And all you have to do is call, let's say a client calls and they want to change it from red to blue. You just have to change it in one line. And you don't have to go through all those other lines to change it. So you're saving yourself about, I don't know how much time, but it only takes, what, five seconds to change that color line right there. And you can charge the client for $150. <laughs> but that's the best thing that I've learned. And just for that alone, I started using SAS more and more and taking down their features. I just grabbed their features and used them one step at a time. This was the best one that I've gained thus far. Nesting. Now with nesting, it's really nice to use nesting, but you have to be careful about using nesting when not nesting too much. You can't go, or the general rule is not to nest over four layers. So I don't nest over three layers. But nesting is when you can do, let's say you want your links colors to have a particular font weight, a text decoration, a color, and a border. And then within that, you also want the hover to be a different color and a di have a different border color or whatever. So you definitely can have that within that. Normally with your CSS, you have to do A, write all your information for your A, and then you have to do hov A hover and write all your information for that. So this is kind of reducing the time that you have to do, I mean, have to write your code, and plus it's right there and it's neatly organized. But just don't nest too much because your code begins to get bloated and that's not a good thing or it's defeating the purpose of using size. So just keep that in mind with nesting. Don't over nest. Mitsins. Mitsins are like little functions that you can use. So for your radius, you know how it's different types of, different browsers have different way of writing your radius or your um, web kit. And what you want to do is make sure you have all of them. There are already mixins out there or have mixin libraries that are out there that you can take and just use it within your code and just have it within this one mixin. So anytime you want to add a border, you don't have to rewrite everything all over again. You can just write it within once. You can just call that particular mixin and put the border radius amount. And there you have it. This is going to be your output right there. So it's looking good. It's looking neat. And you don't have to write it millions of times for a million different things. Extend. Extend is like you have a particular um, selector that you write. So for example, you got the message. And you got a couple of um, styles <laughs> within the message. And then you have your success error, your, I mean, your success error and your warning message. You want to take that same information from message and put it inside of there, but you want to add a different color to it. So it stands allows you to do that. You write that message, selector style, and then you extend that message, and you also say, I want the border color to be green instead of, I think that's gray. And then for the error, you change the same, I mean, you change that border color, but you're having the same other styles, but you're just bringing on the, is the selector message, but changing a particular border color. And then the output is going to look something like this. So again, you're just writing more efficient code in a programmatic, in like a program way. So you want to make sure that you're doing everything proper and right. Okay, SAS maps. SAS maps is like, let's say you have your colors. 
your primary, secondary, and tertiary again, and you have these three colors, and you have a selector that you want to add those three colors to. So you want the background to be a particular color, and you want the color, um, the text color to be a particular color, and the border to have that. So you can call that map function that you create initially instead of writing all of that all over again. It kind of reduces the amount of code that you have to write, and the output is something like that. And these are very basic examples. It gets very, very extensive. But you, I'm going to show you how you can implement it now and then grow. That's how I'm learning right now. I just, just start doing some of the things, looking at the output, and then I take a moment back and see what I can do to increase that level to save me more time. OK, there are already some built-in size functions. One of my favorite is the color functions. Um, the second row, the RGBA, you can create your colors. And you, you don't have to do red, green, blue. You can actually do a um, hexadecimal other color, comma, alpha, and that's going to give you the colors. So I love using that because sometimes you may want your background to be a light blue, but you want your, you want another, or you want a layout within the background to be a slightly lighter color than that. So it's good for something like that. There are many, many SASH functions already built in that you can take advantage of. Media queries. This is when I fell in love with SASH. SASH allows you to write or nest the media queries right inside of the selectors that are the, um, yeah, the selectors that you create. So you definitely get take advantage of that where you don't have to go all the way down to the end. <coughs> Or sometimes you may be making a uh, site and you got your media queries in a different file, and then you got your main file here. That's two HTTP requests that you're calling. So with this, instead of scrolling all the way down to the end of the file or um, exporting your media queries in another file, you can write it right within your. You can nest it right within your selectors, and that's to me that's a beautiful thing. That's when I fell in love with size. So when I'm doing my responsive design, I love it, and I can't wait to, go to learn it and do it within that. OK, source maps for SAS. So you know with the CSS, the best thing that we love to do wow. is right click and inspect element. So they have that for SAS as well. But you have to, on the command line, this is what you can write. And you'll see that at the bottom of your CSS file. That's um, how you do it on the command line. But in a GUI, one of the GUIs that just I showed you earlier in the slide presentation, you can just check, use source map, and it's going to create that file automatically for you. So for example, inside of the um, code kit, you see it's checked right there, create a source map file and it's going to do that for you. And once you do that, it's one more thing that you need to do, which is also created, or um, this is actually a GIF because I'm not using, this is on speaker deck and I don't think they allow you to do the GIFs or the video so it's not moving. But within Chrome, you can click on the settings <coughs> And within settings, it's another couple of check boxes that says use source maps. And then, then you'll be able to um, use your source maps once you check those settings. OK, sources. All the information from this PowerPoint was from a book that I read before I dived into SAS. And it's a great book. It's like 99 pages. You can read it really quickly. It's very nice read. And from my ATL SAS meetup group, I got a lot of the um, code that I posted up here from the website jasonreese.com. So definitely take a look at both of these sites. And I also have resources at the end uh, that also tells you a little bit about how to get started, the main web page of it, and just dive into it. Any questions? Go ahead. I noticed you, um, in the beginning, you were talking a little about underscores mm -hmm. uh, as far as from a theme development perspective. If you don't develop themes at all, which I don't like, would like would SAS 
still be beneficial to me per se, yep. just just from the yeah so how do how does your workflow go do you purchase a theme and you you know um yeah a lot of times I'll, okay. I'll purchase a really good theme and i'll just kind of learn it really really well and then just you know tweak it for individual clients or whatnot okay so for a theme that you purchase um you create a child theme of course mm -hmm. within that child theme create a size mm -hmm. file on that your style sh um sheet you um Follow the same protocol from the previous slides by adding an exclamation mark and that style sheet you can just turn. The beauty of SAS is you can turn any CSS file into a SAS file. All you have to do is change the extension from .css to .scss. Then once you do that, you can either start writing SAS from there or you want to clean up the code a little bit. If you know some of the sections where you want to turn into SAS, you can do that and then start writing SAS from there and then just keep a SAS file for your partials as well. So sometimes the SAS file can get really large. That's the beauty of partials. You want to import your partials. So if you have your forms layout and you want to pull that in, just do an add import right there. But try to keep it organized. Like in a previous slide that I showed you the, that was downloaded from underscores, everything was very organized. And the sheet was the only sheet, um, the only um, style, the style.scss was the only file that was getting compiled and the only one that was getting uploaded <coughs> to the server. So just make sure you organize everything very well. SAS is going to allow me to break up my CSS into smaller little modules or whatever? Yes, okay. so within that SAS file that you already have, mm -hmm. let's say a big chunk of it is about your forms layout and how you want your forms designed. You can take that and put it in another SAS file and name that forms layout or something to that nature with an underscore. And then you import that into the styles file. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? <clears throat> I believe the, uh, the lady up here had uh, a similar question. Are you familiar with any reverse engineering tools that would reverse engineer a compiled, a compiled SAS file at least into a readable CSS file? I am not. You do SAS master, do you do? So. This young lady said you can use SAS Meisters. So I'm not familiar with how to reverse it back from CSS to SAS. That's the question, right? Yeah. That yeah. Question. Yeah, I'm not familiar on how to do that, but um, there's probably a plugin for that. There's a command. There's a plugin for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but she said there's a SAS command for that. So definitely check that out. I've never worked with that. Go ahead. Can you do a little bit of source maps to, again? Okay, so what's your favorite browser? The, the Firefox. Firefox, so Firefox does have it. So you will go into this um, developer mode of Firefox. In that developer section, it's going to ask you if you want to um, use SAS or generate SAS. And you know what? Um, let me see. It's not my computer. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> But basically, this is the Chrome version. So the Chrome version, you see the little settings right there? Sure. You click that, and it's going to give you an option to have a checkbox to use SAS um, source maps. And what it's going to do is allow you to, instead of calling it, when you right-click and do the inspect element, and it's referencing that CSS file, it would then just reference that SAS file. And you can do your edits right up in there, because now you know what line it is going to be on, on the SAS file. Because you're not touching the CSS file anymore, so ever. So it's basically a way to quickly make yep, changes, changes in your browser. Just like you, you do. You go back and then make it an original SAS Exactly, file. Okay. exactly. Yep. Just like you're doing with your regular um, CSS flow. Okay. Any other? Go ahead. So I'd also recommend that you look up all the kind of search engine inspection tools that you want. You can actually pass your files back to your SAS file, and all those changes that you make in the browser will just basically get files and stuff. Yes.
Bruce does all those things as well. So there's like really great tasks on here that will do these things where we want to follow the changes and then just compile it on one save. So it's really, really nice to just kind of Okay. Um, I, I've used all of them on the project. And it just depends. Uh, I like Grunt. It runs good, but apparently Bolt is significantly faster. Uh, and it is. They're kind of like, like you were saying earlier, like how much do I need to do what I need to do? Mm -hmm. uh, doing it in real time anyway. Mm -hmm. so, and then also do things like error reporting. So like if you misplace a test bug in bracket or something like that, it will tell you, oh, we on this line, you haven't closed a, a bracket or you missed a call or something. And it won't compile and do the system. Yeah, CodeKit does that as well too. Gives nice error reporting. Thank you for that. Any other questions? Oops. No other questions? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I tweeted out the slides. <laughs>